Yeah man, see the car there, the boy, thief that car there. And look how I try to count the one way, and the man then back him up and gun shot him, blood clit. Yeah man, see the active police officer there. Yeah man, the man then can and gun shot him. And go, see the car there. A thief, him thief the axe here. Yeah, boy, thief the axe here, and the man come down for him, bank him there, so. Because he don't know the runabout, like he don't know the way. And look how much I count the one way. That's the way the police are telling me still. So, he can get gunshot. The boy, the boy, the boy, the man who come and look like he's a light of fire and all that. See a caravan and tracker, so they just bind up him with gunshot. See, the caravan is the one there. See the KFC right at Angel run about there. Yeah, so the whole way I have to park up that line there, so. Park up them a rotted line down there, so. You understand? Removing dons from community increase crimes. Welcome back to Jamaica News Channel. Right now we have an additional update. Thank you for watching the previous one. Now click this one and let us get into it. Dr. Herbert Gale says removing dons from community increase crimes. Leave your thoughts and your comment in the comment section. So we'd like to know what you think about this one. Social anthropologist, if I saw that word pronounce, Dr. Herbert Gale believes removing dance from community without putting in place proper social structures will only result in an increase in violence. He argues that the removal of dance from community creates a void that the state quite often does not fill. I see these errors right across the Caribbean all the time. They go into communities. The Dan either gets taken out or get arrested. And then the situation get worse, he say. In fact, I think of a community right now where they removed the Dan and five Dan were created within two years. And the more corner dance you have the more violence you have because now everybody trying to see who is the bigger than dr gale said dr gale was arguing with comments from an inner city residence who spoke exclusively on the need for a dan in an inner city community the resident who spoke on condition of you know the resident who spoke off ear asserted that the removal of dance from communities creates a leadership vacancy that fuels crime and violence. But Dr. Gale does not believe this leadership should come from dance. Instead, he said it's the government's responsibility. To provide guidance in these community through social welfare programs the state cannot have social control without welfare which is something that we are not getting if the state wants to transform a community it has to have leadership structure whether it is the profit the Providence Society or it is the neighborhood watch, but something has to replace it, the Dan and the group cannot just have authority. The authority must be linked to welfare because these are poor people, he said. If the state could come up with ideas as to how to organize communities, I know there was a time way back in the days when you had national youth service and you had all kinds of different stuff in the rural communities. You had church in the inner city where to be the system organized them. But what 
do we use to organize them? Labor right and comrade, he asks. Dr. Gale also wants the government to change its approach to policing in these communities. The social order is by invasion. It's not like their community policing and a structure or whether it's just by invasion, he said. So right now, I feel like this man have a kind of good points, but dance have to be removed. Some of them, because some of these dance are creating more havoc in this community than we think. Some of you as I'm a sub, you know we are gonna go back right away and say leave your thoughts and your comment in the comment section. So we know what you are think. It's not just what we think over here. It's what you guys think over there. So continue leaving your thoughts and your comment in the comment section. We want to know what I think also. New leads into attack on Excelsior Administrator. Police say they have intensified their search for a man who attacked and shot an administrator at the Excelsior Community College in Kingston and Terese. Police source said as part of their probe investigators are also looking at CCTV footage following the incident that has left school officials and students traumatized. The principal of the school said he has also made contact with education minister and officials to provide some level of counseling to the staff members sources claim that new information has also emerged that is suggesting that before the attack there was some level of conversation between the school official and the alleged shooter reports are that about 3.30 p.m. loud explosion were heard and the female was found suffering from iron wounds. Sources said the attack was carried out by a lone man who forced his way on the school ground. But, my viewers are my sub, if this alleged shooter managed to reach on the school compound and was having a conversation with the female, how did he force his way on the compound? I believe that the female let this man in because he knew her. But leave your thoughts and your comments in the comment section. He forced his way on the school ground and pulled a firearm and let off couple at the woman who work in the administrative building at the campus. Reports are that the shooter later fell the scene made good of his escape the female has since been rushed to hospital where she has been admitted so leave your thoughts in your comments in the comment section we know this one is going to be tricky but please do leave your thoughts in your comment missing teens located 13 year old roshana brian and nine year old rohan brian of Pantan Lane, Olaba, St. Catherine, who were missing on Monday, November the 8th, have returned home. They are said to be in good health, tell the police, however, did not provide any details as to where the child were. This is some of the things that we Jamaican have to face every day. People missing, but yet still the police cannot give information where they were, so they were just missing. Or they were just invincible for a matter of time. Reports from the Olaba police are that Rowana, who celebrated her birthday on Sunday, November the 7th, left home with her brother to purchase a cake in Old Arbor. Two little kids alone. Some of you as I'm a sub, leave your thoughts in your comment in the comment section. They went in Old Arbor Town Center at about 11 a.m. An alarm was raised when neither child returned home. Police at the time said anyone knowing the whereabouts of them should have contact the whole of police or the emergency number 119. Some of you as I'm a sub, 
I lost them two little pitney, I lost them way. Nobody never duck take them or nobody never trouble them. Because two of them leave home. A little 12 year old or 13 year old and a little 9 year old brother figure buy cake in a big old harbor town. What kind of foolishness? But where was the parents or the bigger guardian to watch over them little one here? Meanwhile, them dip on the street. The parents should be hold kept um accosted for this situation but leave your thoughts in your comment in the comment section we do listen for your view with no further ado continue like share and subscribe as we say one love peace out bless up